Hello, and welcome to my introduction to the mass spectroscopy lab. This is our experimental apparatus you see right here. And at the heart of this experiment is the Stanford Research Systems Residual Gas Analyzer, which you see right back here. And this residual gas analyzer is a quadrupole mass filter. And All right, the, the residual gas analyzer is hooked into this vacuum chamber, which is necessary for the gas analyzer's proper operation. At the top here, we have a top we have a ionization pressure gauge, and down here at the bottom we have a turbo molecular pump, which maintains a vacuum inside the vacuum chamber. The ionization pressure gauge tells you what the pressure is inside the chamber, and all of this is controlled by the vacuum process controller, which you see right down here. And before you can begin your experiment, you need to make sure that this number reads on the order of. 10 to the minus 7th toy. In the front of the apparatus we have the gas handling system. This gas handling system is responsible for getting sample gases into the vacuum chamber. Your samples would be plugged into here and as soon as you do that you want to go ahead and vacuum out any air or other gases, residual gases that might have been left inside the gas handling system. You do that by turning this little knob right here. It's uh, vacuums out the system using this rough pump off to the side. This little gauge right here tells you what the, the, the pressure is inside the gas handling system relative to atmospheric pressure. And once you've done that, then you can come over here and you use the variable leak valve to basically let gas in and block it off from going into the vacuum chamber. As you can see right here, when this number reads 10, it's closed. And if you turn it this way, and it goes up to 40, it's open, and that's the range you want to keep it in so you don't damage the equipment. Okay, the first thing you would do is you would come over here and you would unscrew this little tube or knob here, and as mentioned, you would make sure the, the gas gets in there, and once you screw it back on, you can um, insert the tube in there and then you screw it on to tighten the seal and you want to make sure you have a nice tight seal there. Once that's done, you uh, make sure the other end is hooked into one of these three uh, gas tanks. This one here is nitrogen, this one's argon, and this one's balloon grade helium. Once this is done, you come over to here and there's this little knob here and you want to open this up it uses this uh, small little vacuum here to vacuum out any of the contaminants that might be in this line. And you want to let that run for a couple minutes. Once that's done, you can come over to the gas tank here. You unscrew this for a little bit and close it. That'll let some of the pressure from this large tank into this small little uh, tank. And then you can see how much pressure is in there. And you can let open this knob to let some of the pressure come in this tube. You want to close it pretty quickly because you only need a little bit of the sample to analyze. And once that's done, you come over to here. And it might take a little bit of time for it to come over here. But um, once the gas makes its way through, uh, it's initially closed at 10. This little knob's at 10. And then you can open it up to 40 to let the gas actually come into the, anal uh, the gas handling system and into the analyzer. And once that's done, you can use your uh, computer program to analyze it. Okay, so once you've done that for one of the, one of the gas tanks, you can repeat it for all three tanks. You'll probably want to do helium last because it has small particles and it's hard to get out of the line. So once you're done with all of those three of those, when you're done with each one, you'll want to close this again so that you can um, you can let this tube out easily because then it'll release the vacuum. And once that's done, you can um, pour like a liquid into one of these apparatus, and then you can just do that. And some of the liquid might vaporize. So you can repeat this process with the liquid, or you can use any other substance that you want. Thank you for Thank you. Um, watching our introduction to the mass spectroscopy lab. I hope you found it useful.